Good morning, guys. You join me at the American Speed Fest at Brand ha Brand Hatch Brands Hatch. Everything today is uh, pure American, so lots of V8s, lots of Corvettes, lots of Mustangs. I just turned up. It already looks amazing. There's uh, NASCARs going around the track today, so I have no idea if you can hear me. I'll try not to do my uh, terrible American accent too much, but I may be slightly tempted. Let's go see what's around. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red how wide Corvettes are until you're like standing right next to them but they are incredibly wide and very very mean looking. This Dodge Charger is uh, what the uh, Americans use for police cars. You can tell this one has been policed up. That's not a word. I'd definitely pull over. That is one pretty Mustang. Look at that pony. Woo! Doing a bit of cleaning. Yeah. Look at that side exit exhaust. This Crown Victoria has actually got all of the police kit inside it so he's got the laptop and the speed gun in there as well found the Mustang section. Whoa, look at that. This car is very, very angry about something. Look how aggressive that is. Mustangs leaving car meets are famous for uh, binning it. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love it when car guys do this. This guy's got a little model of his car inside his car. Does he want his car to catch on fire? This guy's making uh, bacon butty behind his car on his barbecue. Absolutely lovely day for it. You can see the scale of the event here. So I have actually driven around Brands Hatch in a McLaren 570S and a 720S. I remember it being a very tight and technical track, so uh, I'd hate to think what some of these uh, huge American V8s are like around here. Just realised while I was filming next to this uh, Mustang section, I was actually standing on a helipad. Mustang in a Mustang. Here's a UK-US partnership. This guy's got LEDs on his uh, engine cover. It's going faster than I am, I can't keep up. Do you ever get the feeling like you're being watched? This truck has got some great patina on it, so people actually do this now, where they'll deliberately sort of sand away the paint and then lacquer it to make it look as though it's sort of uh, old and rusty. Can't describe how loud these NASCARs are. So this is the Dodge Challenger Hellcat with the 6.2 litre supercharged V8, meant to be one of the fastest road legal drag cars in the world, out of the shop. They actually supply the Hellcat with a second set of uh, skinny front tyres for drag racing. They're being attacked by the Empire. It is a 392 Hemi. 392 stands for cubic inches. The Americans use the uh, Imperial system, and that equates to about 6.4 litres capacity. Is it nine brakes, car number 48, Matt Myers Snyder? We've got air conditioning, sir. We've got air conditioning? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. oh, it's it's I'm very I've got to admit that I felt weirdly intimidated by those stormtroopers. I think it's because I've seen all the bad stuff that they've done on TV. I think this guy's been in here a little bit too long. Pontiac Firebird Trans Am here with a T-top. actually saw one of these last weekend at the uh, White Lion Antiques Classic Car Meet. This engine is so low in the chassis, it's almost touching the floor. So you can see on this Mustang it's got a Roush screw supercharger. I can't actually tell the difference between a root supercharger and a twin screw supercharger. Pretty sure this is a roots blower. Root superchargers actually work by having uh, two screws next to each other and they mesh together and they force the air under high compression into the engine intake. A lot of the uh, classic American cars actually feature a horizontal speedometer like this Mustang has, where the needle actually sweeps across, not in a circular pattern like modern day cars. This has to be one of the cleanest engines I've ever seen. 
So here we have a Dodge Ram. I think they're actually just called Ram now. Uh, they separated from Dodge. These engines feature the uh, cylinder deactivation technology. So this will have a V8 in it and on long journeys under certain RPM, four of the cylinders will shut down to save fuel. Mini monster trucks. Small cars made into big cars made into small cars. <laughs> I hope it comes across how loud these are. This red and white Chevy Bel Air looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So rare that you see anything like this in the UK. Actually looks like the owner drag races it, judging by the gearbox that they've got in it. That looks like a quick shifter to me. So this uh, hot rod has a sticker saying, warning, parts may fall off, but it looks like uh, quite a few parts have already fallen off. Just to give you a size of scale, this is a person walking next to this uh, 1964 Chevy Bel Air. This Bel Air is actually for sale, yours for only 17 and a half thousand pounds. The aerials mounted on the passenger window on the rear door. Look at this Ram air intake. How far forward that is in the engine bay. Our lovely model here is actually giving us a demonstration of how small some American cars can be as well. I guarantee that this is insanely loud. I know that because that is the exhaust system. It's just a pipe pointing down to the road. That steering wheel just comes straight out of the floor. Has your car got a dashboard? Yeah. Yes, mate, I've got one. This is one very cool looking Ford Popular built uh, by Ford UK in the uh, mid to late 50s and early 60s. This definitely isn't a standard one. It says 350 on the side, which I think means it's got a 350 cubic inch V8 in there. 350 cubic inches is about 5.7 liters. And this car is very small. Gases are very distinctive because of the uh, front end being so jacked up like this one. Basically that's for weight transfer, so they jack the front end up low so that in a drag race the rear wheels get traction because of the shift of the weight to the rear wheels. This one's actually a 7.5 litre supercharged V8. Another Mustang here, I really don't like this style of body style Mustang. I'm not 100% sure on the year, but I think it's a mid 90s, like 95. So on most fast cars you go for a small car with a big engine. This is just a big car with a big engine, but still, look at how much space is in that engine bay. This car is so big that it's actually like a genuinely long walk around it. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Yay! I think the owner's just come back over getting a bit concerned that I was walking around his car. This Kenworth truck has an amazing logo. Look at that duck. I can't help but feel like you need a bigger bucket. So here we have a 1970s Plymouth Superbird. Quite easy to tell a uh, Roadrunner Superbird because of the reared wing. The Superbird was actually banned from NASCAR in the 70s because of uh, the nose cone and the wing. It, they said it didn't look like a real stock car. I don't know what NASCAR looks like a stock car. You know your car's quick when you have to put a wheelie bar on it. You know your car's really fast when you have to have a parachute. Here's an actual drag car, not a lot to it. Doesn't even look like it's got front brakes to be honest with you. Hasn't really got a steering wheel either, they're sort of two handles. Just came around to the front of this dragster here wondering what these two holes in the bonnet were, thinking they were air intakes. They are. Each one has got a turbo inside it, so this is a twin turbo V8. I think there's an engine somewhere on this supercharger. If the engine doesn't fit under the bonnet of the car, you should just put it in the cabin. I can imagine it gets quite warm in here. It's a mouldy truck. Real living mould. Looks like it's been dragged out from the bottom of the sea. This hole as well, this is for ventilation. I feel like it would actually be in better condition if they did pull it up from the bottom of the sea. So in true American style, I've got my uh, jerky beef burger here. It's turned out to be a lovely day. It is very, very warm and I'm afraid of getting sunburned, so uh, obviously got the cap on. It's like a little slice of America in the UK. This time next year we'll be millionaires. So according to this sign, this van was actually used in uh, one of the episodes, Jolly Boys Outing, one of 11 vans used to film the series. Very nice condition Cobra. It's definitely not an original judging by the condition. I think this one's actually uh, a Gardner Douglas and they come from Grantham in the UK. Now this is a real life NASCAR. Judging by the grass on the tyres on this one, it looks like it's come off. There's not a lot to NASCARs, it's just a massive engine, a chassis, a fiberglass body and a steering wheel. Look at all the control units in this one, it's just sat up on the dash. And they've got the classic race car air conditioning system, which is two tubes pointed at the driver's face. NASCARs are actually uh, renowned for rolling over at high speed, so that's why you see all these uh, fins that are sticking up off the roof. That's to disrupt the airflow to stop it rolling over if they go sideways. 
NASCAR actually stands for the uh, National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. NASCAR's actually originated from uh, bootlegging or uh, moonshine runners in the US where they used to modify their cars so that they could outrun the police whilst they were delivering their illegal alcohol. She's terrifying. That could be the biggest turbocharger I've ever seen. Look at the size of the radiator fan. I can imagine this truck offends uh, lots of different people on so many levels. Any second now it's going to turn into a giant robot. Any second now. Any second. Oh my days, what is this? This looks absolutely incredible. Chevy Bel Air race car. I can't imagine underneath that this is actually too different from the uh, modern race cars. It's just got an older body on it. I'm not sure if this is hydro dipped or a wrap in the engine bay of this uh, 5 litre Mustang GT. That's one way to save your legs. Skynet, knew they were going to take over. Look at this Cobra race car. This Aston Martin engine is absolutely vast. I don't know how to get across how big this is on camera. But there's my hand next to it. Look at the size of the cylinder heads and the size of the uh, oil lines as well. Three piston AP racing calipers. It's got the uh, brake disc cooling ducts as well there, look. Feeding into the brake caliper and the disc. But these race lorries are actually here from the Netherlands, so it is an international event. This exhaust routing is absolutely incredible. They come out the block, go to the front of the engine bay, and exit on the other side just before the rear wheel. This guy's mobility chair is awesome. Okay guys, so I've just come round the track a bit. I'm going to stand at Connor Petch Bend. This is the first race of the Elite Series NASCAR drivers. Okay guys, so I hope that the camera picked up just how loud those NASCARs were. It's very uh, interesting to see them going both left and right, so uh, not really designed for it and lots and lots of sliding. They look really good fun. This is the winner of the race. Oh dear. Poor little mini. That's it from me here today. I've got really bad sunburn. I think that's a sign that I need to go home. It's been brilliant. I didn't understand how loud NASCARs were until I came and watched them here. Very rare that you get to see NASCARs in the UK, so it's uh, really nice to get a different sort of motorsport. I'm just uh, gonna take a quick look at some of these cars behind. You can spend a week here looking around at all the cars, and they actually do weekend tickets because you can't see it all in one day. Thank you very much for watching, and make sure you subscribe for some new content coming soon. Cheers.